Throughout our country's illustrious history, brave men and women have defended our freedom, sacrificing their hopes, dreams, youth, even their very lives. Some of the most poignant images of courage arise from the ashes of World War II, when thousands of countrymen answered the call to arms with a patriotic voice. dramatic history emerges in the pre-war days of 1939, when the United States Army Air Corps designated three and a half million acres of wilderness in Utah's western desert as a site for bombing and gunnery ranges. A remnant of ancient Lake Bonneville, the Great Salt Flats geography and landscape rendered this an ideal location for a detachment base, isolated yet within flying range of important ports of the west coast. Though life at Wendover may have been dreary, soldiers and civilians alike made the best of what would otherwise be an inhospitable environment. They trained and worked side by side, forming relationships of trust which endured beyond the trials of war. Wendover was a subpost of Fort Douglas until 1942, when it achieved official status as an Army air base. Living and working space were at a premium when the first heavy bomber group arrived in early April. The 306th Bombardment Group, with four squadrons of B-17 Flying Fortresses, consisted of 72 aircraft and 2,261 people. The base expanded during the blitz of construction as 20 more bomber groups and one fighter group came to train at the secluded range, the largest military reserve in the world. The drone of engines from hundreds of B-17, B-24, B-29, P-47, and cargo planes shattered the desert silence. Over a thousand crews trained at Wendover before flying combat missions around the world. Every man was a hero in his own right. Some even received a Medal of Honor. Wendover's exceptional gunnery range was unequaled in the military. General Douglas MacArthur praised Wendover servicemen as the best trained gunners in the Army. In early 1944, Wendover Air Base was home to nearly 20,000 military personnel and civilians. 668 buildings, some covered with tar paper, dotted this arid coast. Apart from offices, barracks, machine shops, and hangars, the base consisted of a 300-bed hospital, gym, swimming pool, library, theaters, general and officers mess hall and chapel. No other airfield compares to Wendover's unique contribution to the cause of freedom. With the Manhattan Project's development of the atomic bomb in the fall of 1944, the Army Air Corps prepared for the weapons delivery. Colonel Paul W. Tippett Jr. selected this desert oasis for his top secret mission. From their P-29s, crews dropped mock bombs, called pumpkins, which resembled the plutonium bomb known as Fat Man. The 216th base unit assembled and tested this highly secretive weapon stored at window. Ultimately, these airmen orchestrated one of the most decisive actions of military history the first deployment of nuclear weapons. In May of 1945, Colonel Tippett flew his B-29 Superfortress, the Enola Gay, from Wendover Air Base to Timian Island in the Marianas, east of the Philippines. As a way to end the war, President Truman offered Japan an ultimatum, surrender or accept the consequences. The deadline of surrender elapsing, Colonel Tibbets and his crew flew the Enola Gay from Tinian Island to Hiroshima on August 6, 1945. Long months of training over the salt-crusted earth of Wendover, Utah, came down to a few deadly seconds. Three days later, Boxcar, a second B-29 from the 509th, dropped 
Fat Man over Nagasaki. Wendover was central to our victory over Japan. Her people key players in a course which forever changed the world. Post-war use of the Wendover airfield includes rocketry, guided missile training, munitions testing, and firefighting exercises. In 19... She'll be listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Like a desert mirage, Wendover Airfield is vanishing, one structure at a time. Buildings have been sold, some for as little as $150. Others have suffered neglect. Unless we step forward now, the airfield will be swept away by the winds of time. The heart of a project to restore, not recreate, Wendover Airfield is a noble one. Unlike most base museums, Wendover is the only World War II era airport with the entire front line of five hangars, operations building, control tower, fire station, and three squadron buildings still intact. It is the one remaining original United States Army airfield of this size which can be renovated, preserved, and used to teach future generations of Americans about our nation's legacy of heroism and duty. Comedian Bob Hope once jokingly referred to this space as leftover airfield. Fortunately, something is left over from which to create a testimonial worthy of the thousands of veterans we remember. This will be a living history museum with aircraft, exhibits in the B-29 hangar and hangar number five. World War II vehicles, gunnery range, dormitories, and servicemen memorabilia. Generous donations to the airfield's restoration project will preserve a distinguished vestige of history we cannot afford to forget. Everyone who has ever walked the desert paths of historic Wendover Airfield has a story to tell. It's time we listen.